Um, so I'd like to now direct a question directly to Ro. Uh, this is a question from Hazel in Bristol, who says, how do we work with the huge psychological defense of denial that we've seen people use in the climate crisis? Yes, very meaty one there. Okay, so I think it's important to understand that there are different forms of, of denial. And the one which I think is most, most common is not the outright denial where people say it's not, it's not happening. I think that is largely a thing of the past. But what you're much more likely to encounter is what sometimes feels like indifference. And there's a word which is used in psychoanalysis for this, for this form of denial. We call it disavowal. And what this means is that you don't deny the facts of climate change, but you deny that you deny its significance, you deny its meaning and you deny um, that it's gonna have any impact on you, you deny that you can do anything about it. And you use this as a way to keep the knowledge that you have that climate change is there and climate change is real in a separate, in a separate box. And this means that you can just carry on, carry on as, as normal. And I think that there are different ways that we can approach this question, whether, and it depends very much whether we're talking um, to somebody individually face to face, whether you're engaged in a sort of small casual conversation that you might have when you're on a protest or when you run into somebody at the shops, or whether you've actually got the platform and you're and you're and you are public speaking. But I think what you need to be aware of all the time is that there is a reason for this defense, because that's what it is. This is the way that people protect themselves from something which they know in their heart of hearts is extremely dangerous and is requires them to, to think about it and to think about the way their life is and to think about everything that is, is, go, is going on in the world. And a lot of people are understandably very reluctant, very reluctant to do that. And so I think you encounter that again and again and again in different, in different forms. Um, and I've got a lot of things I could say about the different ways that we communicate in these different, um, in these different areas, but perhaps that might come up in another question. Um, so that's maybe just enough to, for, for now, just to describe um, these different forms of denial that we, that we encounter. I mean, yeah, absolutely. I'm sure it will come up again and again, but is there anything you can say just as a sort of, dare I say a summary or an overview, because I'm sure a lot of us have come up against this denial, whether it's when we're out on the streets, or whether it's when we're talking to our own friends and family or next door neighbours, you know, whatever level we are of our own activism or our own awareness. How do we deal with it without just sort of going up against, as you say, people's yeah. fear and people's defensiveness? So the first thing to understand is that there are two different levels in a conversation that are going on. And the surface one is what we call the content. And this is where we mostly concentrate. And climate campaigners particularly often concentrate on the information that they want to get across. This is the content. And we, we operate on the basis of what's called information deficit theory. We act as if the problem is that people don't have the right information. And that if they did have the right information, then they would simply do what we expect. Expect. And what you need to concentrate on is the kind of the all of the iceberg that's underneath the surface. And in that in that iceberg, primarily are people's emotions and their reactions. And so you need to listen to the feeling that is coming across to you. And so when you see somebody begin to fidget and they begin to move away from you as you're, as, as you're talking, that's telling you that they're uncomfortable. And so what you then need to do um, is that you need to start to pay, pay attention to that. So I might say to somebody who looks like they're getting a little bit uncomfortable because I've said, oh, I, I don't fly anymore. And they go, oh, um, I say, that looks like it's making you feel quite uncomfortable. Uh, it looks like you're, and I'll then see whether I get a response from that. So what I'm doing all the time is I'm chasing down the defence. I am trying to talk with them about the feeling that they have about what I'm saying because it's only by getting them to talk about the feeling that I'm ever going to get past this defense. So this idea that there is content and there is processes, the way the conversation is going on, there's the expectations we have of each other, there's the way we protect ourselves from things we, don't, we can't quite bear to think about. There are all the fantasies that we have of each other, which Margaret mentioned earlier, this way that you, you have projected onto you, the idea that you're trying to make people feel guilty. What you have to do is to try to begin to talk about those things. So I might say to a friend, oh, 
You seem to see me as a real killjoy. Ooh, that, that's hurtful. I don't like that. So all the time, what I'm doing is talking about the process of what is going on. So it's like you're noticing how they're feeling, either because you can feel it or you're noticing their body language or what they're doing, they're fidgeting, and you're reflecting that back. You're sort of exactly. saying, oh, I'm noticing you're doing this or it's making me feel like this. And then you're kind of actually talking about what's under the tip of the iceberg rather than just giving more information. And exactly, because the, what that, happens um, with more information is that you're pushing, you're pushing somebody away by, do, by, by, by doing that. And I think you always need to be very alert in a conversation to the point at which somebody has heard enough. They're finding it hard to process it. And that's the point where you need to come in, you need to help them process it. And, and you need to show that you're listening, that you're curious, that you care about how they're feeling. And those things will all help you have much better conversations. Thank you, Ro. I'm sure a lot of people watching and listening will find that incredibly helpful.